so much. Yeah. definitely trying to stop us from, from exposing the lies. Um, we're going to continue Pastor's sermon today, or sermon series, uh, Light in the Darkness. Um, you know, hopefully he'll uh, go back over this next week in its entirety. We'll just have a very brief, short, maybe informal conversation about today's theme, um, which is the uh, Satan's lie this week is you have to be good. So let's uh, please stand and join me in our first hymn on Eagle Glimmer. <laughs> Sorry, Greg. What? 
Don't talk about this. <laughs> I love the invocation. We worship you this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us read responsibly. Salvation and glory and power belong to our God. Who is true and just are his judgments. Praise our God, all you his servants. You who fear him both small and great. For our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad in the name of the Lord. Uh, let us pray together. O oh God of peace, we turn aside from an unsettled world, seeking rest for our spirits and light for our thoughts. We bring our work to be sanctified, our wounds to be healed, our sins to be forgiven, and our hopes to be renewed. In you there is perfect harmony and peace. Draw us to you and ease the tensions of our lives. Lead us out from the happiness of this world and fill us with your peace. For Jesus' sake, amen. Let us confess our sins. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless glory and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O oh Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you. 
Let us read uh, responsibly Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength. And our help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear. Though the earth give way. <clears throat> and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam. And the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help us hear her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. The kingdom falls. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come the words of the Lord. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, forever and ever. Amen. Now our first reading from Romans chapter 3, verses 21 through 31. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement, through the shedding of his blood, to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it, did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time, so as to be just, and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Where then is boasting? It is excluded. Because of what? Law. The law that requires works? No, because of the law that requires faith. For we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Or is God the God of Jews only? Is he not the God of Gentiles too? Yes, of Gentiles too. Since there is only one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through that same faith. Do we then nullify the law by, his, by this faith? Not at all. Rather, we uphold the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, our second reading, John chapter 8, 42 through 47. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I have come here from God. I have not come on my own. God sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Can any of you prove my, guilty, my guilt of sin? Or prove me guilty of sin? If I am telling the truth, why don't you believe me? Whoever belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, and now uh, join me in singing the Apostles' Creed.
Good morning. Again, this is not going to be uh, a full <clears throat> sermon today, but I did want to uh, maybe just have an informal discussion kind of about pastors' uh, theme today. That's what we have to go off of. And I think um, last week he kind of gave an overview, uh, cheat sheet, as it were. <coughs> Sorry. Um, for this sermon series, Light in the Darkness, he said that light is truth and darkness is falsehood. And he went on later to further to say that what he means about us combating the lies of Satan is really talking about our confidence in God's promises. And so today, I think um, what stands out in, in the reading to me was the accusatory tone um, that Paul had. Um, I'm not sure if he thought he was funny, but he seemed to call out many of the churches he had started as being foolish. What are you doing? This is simple. Um, and you know, it's really the, the Satan who is accusing us under the law, right? This, this whole idea, today's lie, you have to be good. He goes on uh, in the front of the bulletin to talk, to say this. Luther would beat himself because of his sin. He felt so guilty that he would flog himself to the point of death to somehow pay for his sins. I really don't know what 15th century Germany was like, but that sounds kind of weird. Uh, I mean, to have that strong of guilt, I don't know that we maybe have that sometimes, that degree that we would go to that length. But Pastor did say that we have a similar drive, right? I think everyone can understand that innately, that we we have this compulsion to to be good, that we want to do it, that it's it's a selfish thing that we believe that we can do something that matters when it's God. And so <clears throat> As he went, he, he says here, uh, he may not have gone as far as, as Luther in our, or we may not have gone as far as Luther in our quest for righteousness. We have that same drive, as I said. I must be good. I must be better or God won't approve of me. It is the natural mindset of humanity, but that mindset only leads to death and damnation. It is a mindset that Satan loves to whisper. But when we talk about this selfish first person, me, 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 I want, right? That's that's really arrogance in the sense that that we we have these basic truths that our works are like filthy rags, right? But yet we continue want to do good, right? I mean, we talk about a life of light in the darkness, right? That that's an exposed life. The light exposes. And so as Christians, maybe with our focus, you know, we talked about evangelism recently and how people see us, right? The, the, the truth, our lives, Christian life, we get exposed, and I think that that is sometimes hard, that we continue to have to struggle with our failing sinful nature, and then, and then people see that, right? And so we think that we can do something about it, and, we, and we, have to, we have to get away from that basic selfish perspective, because that's really what the devil is using right here, I think, that this mindset he's whispering to us, this lie that he's telling us, that you have to be good, that, that we somehow strive for that, it, it's really an easy lie. And I think, um, you know, the best example that I, I, I came up with, um, I think, to, 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 to pinpoint this, um, well, I think, I don't know, it's, it's sort of a dark thought, right? Um, to... The thing that I wonder if when Satan showed up at the crucifixion, was he there to party, right? Did he think that he was responsible for the imminent murder of Jesus? And, and he thought he was being successful, right? This was, this was the victory lap for him to, to just burn the whole thing down, right? And do you think then at some point he, you know... Something clicked, and he he realized, right? You know, I mean, the, the 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 face goes pale, the blood drains, and he realized, like, what did I just do? He thought he was being victorious, but instead, 
you know, he thought he was controlling the situation, maybe. And in fact, God was using it for our salvation. So he just let everyone the potential to slip through his fingers, right? I mean, you know, he probably showed up as a king to celebrate his own coronation. And then, you know, he left like that guy leaving the dog track who just lost all his money. You know, go back to his family to explain what he did, right? I mean, he just, the change for him, right? I mean, how, like, we have no sympathy for the devil, but if you go and you look from his perspective, after that defeat at the cross, right? I mean, um, it makes me smile to think about how, how devastated he must have been, right? How selfish, arrogant a person he was, thinking he had done so well, and to be defeated so soundly in such an obvious way. Um, so then, how does he come back from that, right? Like, he, how does he, I mean, there's no strategy, right? Like, say if you said, okay, we could go down to the convention center, there's a guy doing a get, a get rich quick scheme, right? He's got a piece of paper, you pay him $200, he gives you a piece of paper that has 12 basic, simple steps in it for you to say, hey, I'm going to get rich. And then, surprisingly, you go follow those 12 basic steps and you get rich. You share it with all your family. They do it. They get rich, right? How does someone combat a get rich, get rich quick scheme like that, right? Like, I wouldn't want to try and, you know, compete against that. So, but the interesting thing, and the devil in, I mean, he's not stupid, uh, he came up with it. He only the only thing he could play to was our selfishness, right? That's the only thing he can whisper to, right? He has no uh, no strong case for us, right? Like we, he has nothing to entice us with but death, right? So he has to play to that thing that is already in us, right? That selfishness. Um, so you know, I mean. I, the self is hard, right? Because I think, you know, personally, um, to be honest, with Pastor's last sermon series about being an evangelist, that was that was definitely uh, a gut check for me. I, I mentioned that in my sermon a couple weeks ago, and I think, you know, we 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 have all these just amazing basic truths, you know, uh, where God tells us to pray, you know, pray without ceasing, you know, uh, renew your spirit daily by being in the Word daily. And I, you know, I mean, I have to be honest, like, how many of us do that, right? Like, I have failed at that time and time again. Talk to my family, my friends, you know, I'm not a perfect guy. And, and you know, it. I have always thought I'm a smarter and better Christian than I really am. You know, just talk to my family. They will tell you, right? I mean, but none of that matters, right? Because we don't have to do anything. So... Like, how do we really believe that, right? Because the lie is you have to be good. But pastor is saying Luther found the truth. It was the, the whole reason for the Reformation, and maybe we rely on that. You know, it's just more common sense, common knowledge, what basic truth, right? We're talking about the, the, the doctrine of justification by faith. It's really simple. It's explanatory. But at the same time, like... Do, do we really believe it? I, I think of the, the movie Goodwill Hunting, right? Um, he's a maladjusted youth, and, and he was abused by his father and his psychologist, this professor. They have this really, you know, I don't like dramatic TV, but they have this moment, right, where he's like, won't let go of him, and he tells him, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. And he just keeps saying that, and it's, like, super awkward for me uh, because it seems like that would be more like damaging psychologically than trying to talk it out or something like that. But you keep saying, and, and then they're both crying, and then it's this great moment where he learned that it's not his fault, just because he said it over and over again, right? We're like that, right? Like, we don't have to do anything. We don't have to do anything, but we're still dealing with that self of nature, and do we really believe it? I, I, it's so hard, right? Like, how do we believe that sometimes? I. In the, in the sermon text, let me read the sermon text today, and I think maybe we can answer that. Wait, it's in the it's in. Okay, 
All right, so this is Galatians, this is chapter 3, verses 1 through 7 and 10 through 13. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the spear by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish after having beginning by means of the spirit, are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? Have you experienced so much in vain, if it really was in vain? So again, I ask, does God give you his spirit and work miracles among you by the works of the law, or by your believing what you heard? So also Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Understand then that those who have faith are children of Abraham. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. As it is written, cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. Clearly no one who relies on the law is justified by God, because the righteous will live by faith. The law is not based on faith. On the contrary, it says, the person who does these things will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole. This is the word of the Lord. So it's, it's interesting. I think um, Paul is quoting uh, Genesis, I think it's chapter 15, verse 3, right, where God comes to Abraham in a vision. And then says, you know, look at all these stars, and you know, um, this is going to be your your children are going to uh, be innumerable. And and he he at first questions God, and then he, and then he believes, and then he's justified through his faith in doing that. Um, like Abraham is the beginning of the the Jewish people, right? And so I think we forget sometimes that you know, as we read through the Old Testament with all the, the laws and, and their, their customs and, and trying to understand that, I think we lose the fact that they knew very clearly that they were justified by faith as well. Um, and so the, the Galatians, I think, were dealing with the Judaizers, right, who thought that, that Gentile converts to Christianity needed to become Jews first. And so there was this kind of, like, backsliding into customs. They thought it was necessary to become Christian, and Paul is trying to clear that up. You know, again, in a very, hey, you guys are being foolish situation. Um, and so for us, it's, it's different, right? I try to get on that selfish aspect of I, the truth is in, in when Jesus is twisting our selfish perspective to, 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 to drive us to focus on our selfish perspective. And... And God is telling us repeatedly how foolish we are for not believing what he says. It was in our readings, right? As we hear these things. You know, Paul is always crying about how wretched he is. And, and, and maybe we're doing that as Christians who, you know, are failing. Like I said, talking about the evangelism and that being such, like, disappointing for me. Um, but then the forgiveness and the realization that we don't have to do anything. Uh, how do we really enact that? How do we... How do we make that true for us, I think, sometimes? And, you know, when our, our selfishness, our, our human perspective is so persistent. Um, and I, I just came up with two things. Um, the first thing is, uh, I think we should treat life like loitering in a parking lot. Um, probably need to explain that. Uh, especially the kids today who everyone has a cell phone. Um, I spent a big portion of my high school years uh, loitering in a parking lot. My mom um, would often lose track of time when she was grocery shopping, and uh, you know, and then sometimes maybe you know I I ran cross country because my brother ran cross country and I was terrible at it, so I'd skip practice a lot. And I chose to loiter in the parking lot instead of running like five miles or something like everybody else is doing. Uh, you know, you'd have to call on the payphone and leave a voicemail. If it went to voicemail, I knew my mom was shopping and I knew that would take like another 45 minutes. And so I had to make the tough choice. Do I do some of my homework now so that I can watch TV when I get home? 
right? You know, it's spring break on MTV right now, so, uh, you know, so do I do my homework, right? And it's a selfish perspective, right? I can't, you know, should I be watching MTV? No. Uh, should I be doing my homework? Yes, but I don't want to, right? And, and I think, you know, I'm not saying the Christian life is doing homework, but I think that when you listen to Paul in other areas of scripture, he talks about life being uh, a race of, of not running around aimlessly, but you, you race for the prize, and you should race in a way that you win. And so I think the interesting thing, why life should be a parking lot, because God says we don't need to do anything, right? I, I, you know, I talk negatively about myself, and, and I'll talk negatively about you if you guys want. But ultimately, like, we don't have to do anything. And I keep saying that, and you still don't believe me. I can see it in your eyes. You don't believe me. We don't have to do anything, right? We, you know, as Christians, you know, maybe we acknowledge that our works uh, aren't our salvation, but we think we need to do good. We think we need to do better, right? And honestly, no matter how bad I fail, no matter how much I fall, fall asleep as a Christian or I'm not a good evangelist or whatever the things that you're struggling with that are causing you guilt, right? You, you don't need to worry about those because you're saved anyway, right? So we're saved anyway. It's a done deal, right? We talk about the crucifixion like the battle's over. Pastor last week said there's no contest, right? We, you know, with this sermon series somewhat focusing on Satan, right, it's good that we don't pretend he doesn't exist, but at the same time, we don't, we're not trying to highlight him and, 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 and increase his effect on us. We, there's no point, right? So, like we're saved, right? We don't have to worry about anything. And, and that sounds, that feels so counterintuitive, right? Because immediately I go to thinking like, oh, well, I can just go do anything. And Paul talks about endlessly, he's free to do anything, but not everything is beneficial. And then in my sinful self, it's like, okay, well, that then like that's circular. You're lying to me. You're saying I don't have to do anything, but then you're saying I have to be good, which I can't do. And so I'm stuck in the middle, right? <clears throat> that's just that's our selfish perspective. So so just do whatever you want, right? Like that, oh, we can just do whatever we want. And it's no, it's like don't do anything. Unless you're compelled to, right? It's about compulsion. Faith is de is dead without work. Some people say, right? Like the second thing that I said is, or that I came up with about making this this true, really enacting the, this separation from ourselves of, you know, it being so hard to think about our lives and to say, okay, you know. <clears throat> Just this section before this in Galatians, right, it, it says about how we are crucified with Christ, and it's not now I who live, it's Christ who lives in me, right? And that gives back to the selfish perspective that, like, I can tell you, it's not your fault, it's not your fault. Over and over again, I can tell you, it's not you that's living. You think your life is about you? No, it's about Christ, right? I can say that. We just don't believe it. Like, we don't, like, we have that selfish in us, and, and, and there's that struggle, right? I've gone over that enough. Like, the idea is, I don't know, maybe just, like, let's have, let's have a wake for our sad, little, sinful self, right? Let's say, okay, it's really sad. We know you really want stuff. You want stuff really bad, right? You like to do all sorts of stuff. But you're broken. What you do is broken. There's no circumventing that, right? And there, there I think there is this feeling, because, because we're constantly compulsed to be selfish, there's this sadness about it that we were meant to be perfect, and we're not. There is grief and there is loss there. And if we just like maybe acknowledge that, like, hey, I know you want to go live your life. Like, particularly young people, right? You're looking at going to college, you want to do something, you want to be somebody, you want, you want all these relationships, you want to visit exciting places. It's, you know, there's... Nothing, you know, culturally or, or you know, um, human-wise that's necessarily wrong with those things, right? But it's that selfish drive that you have to come to the sense of loss that it is no longer about you anymore. Your life, like everything. I mean, that's tough. It's grief. Like, let's just learn to grieve that our selfishness 
is dead, and everything that it leads to is dead, and the only real life is letting Christ live through us. And maybe that can sink in to that point of, hey, you don't need to do anything, right? This lie, you have to be good. The truth is, you do not have to do anything to be good. Let us pray that the Lord can make the truth real to us, that we can act that change in our lives, and that we can truly believe and know that we don't have any have to do anything to receive his salvation. Amen. All right, if you could please stand uh, and join me in our hymn, Almighty Fortress of Our God.
are off. for birthdays, uh, Emma Sievers, Ken Seibel, Tim Saunders, and Paul Velo. Are we missing any birthday, birthdays or anniversaries? What, any special prayers? Maybe we should pray for Pastor. Um, yes, for Pastor, but also Jack's brother, Art, has discontinued treatments and is home on hospice care. So, praying for, for peace and for the families. Another hospice care. One of my partners has been fighting with brain cancer and he's on hospice. James got his report last week and no cancer. So praises. He still has a couple more tests because his T cell number has so low and they don't know the reason why the cancer free um, tests he's had to fail. So thank you. We'll pray for praises and, and blessing along his tests. Any online? We have uh, safe travel for Wayne's family, Bonnie and Darren. Uh, healing for Wayne's niece, Lexi, from back surgery. Uh, for those with health issues, Pastor Jay, Elry, Deb, Ted. I'm sure that list is even longer. We'll pray for everyone. And then safe travels for Paul. All right, let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, we come before you humbled by your simple truth, and we pray you continue to, to be with us and help us understand these simple truths that are just difficult for us. Please give meaning to our lives. Please help us uh, know that we do not need to do anything, but also compel us, show us your love, uh, help us want to do even better than is possible on our own. We thank you for that, Lord. We come before you today uh, to thank you for the years of life that you have given Emma, Ken, Tim, and Paul. We pray you continue to bless them in, in this coming year. Uh, make them a blessing to their families and to us. And, and we thank you and please bless them. Um, we pray for everyone dealing with health issues. Uh, being alive is often a health issue. Lord, please, please teach us to understand the life to come is the important life, but that you are with us and you're going to help us bear the burdens of this life. We pray for all of the issues that people are dealing with, that you are with them, uh, that you heal them if it's your will, and that you are with the families to help them and encourage them. Um, 
We pray for those whose health issues have gone gone beyond what what is is doable for humans. We we put them into your care. Uh, we think of Jack's brother, and we think of Sue's partner. Please be with them. Please bring them peace, and please uh, be with their families. Uh, heal the families from that grief. We also pray for Cousin James specifically. We thank you for the blessings of being cancer-free. We pray that the tests go well. Please bless him and his family. We pray for safe travels for Wayne's family, Bonnie and Darren. Um, we pray for safe travels for Paul. And we, we pray for Lexi. We pray that her back surgery, uh, that she is healed that you you bless her from the surgery, that it is a good thing in the end. Um, <clears throat> we love you. We thank you for this opportunity to worship. We pray for Pastor. We pray that he is back to health and can preach the intended sermon next week. Uh, we pray all these things in your name. And now we pray as you taught us the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you, bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Last week, but do I do greetings first or do we? Greetings first. Okay, please greet each other. I thought like so I wouldn't have a 
for the Advent Light Candlelight. So if you are feel moved to lead that, go ahead and talk with us. Um, Saints Triumphant Sunday is coming up November 12th. Um, carnations are $1.25 if you would like one on the altar speak with Judy. The deadline to call her um, is November 1st. Anybody that doesn't want to buy a carnation but would like to have their loved ones who have passed Remember during the service, give the names to the pastor or to myself, and he will read them as part of the service. Um, there's no need to buy a donation if you don't care. Yes, by November 8th, get the names to us. Yes, please. Um, Veterans Day service, the high school is having a Veterans Day service on November 10th. Um, at 8.30 in the morning, so come, bring friends, share that with whoever would like to come to that. Um, if you notice the turkeys up there, um, Deb, do you want to talk about that? Sure, it's our annual Thanksgiving baskets. Turkeys all have rather than buying the meat, we build baskets. This year we have seven families and about 40 people. Um, so everything will be due back to Sunday night. Was that seven families of 30 or just 30 total? So grab a feather and bring those items back. So we want it back on the 12th. On the 12th, okay. On the 12th. And then um, fellowship team's having a Thanksgiving meal on the 19th. Um, catechism class got moved to Wednesday. It's not Tuesday night. Um, youth group tonight um, from 6 to 8 here. Um, pumpkins, costume, games, candy. And then um, craft fair is coming up on December 9th. So there is something on social media right now if you want to sign up and be a vendor, but also put in your calendar and start sharing the date with your friends to come shopping. We need both vendors and shoppers. And then lastly, um, you guys should be getting, um, the members should be getting an email for the weekly update every Friday. If you are a member and not receiving that email, please make sure I have your email so you're getting that, that email. Um, and if you're a visitor, we're working on something and you'd like to be included in that, um, please give me your email address as well. So. Awesome, thank you. Judy. Just one more thing. Um, I wrote a thank you note to the congregation for the beautiful bouquet of flowers that we received last week. And I put a picture of the bouquet in case you haven't seen it. It is still beautiful. It's awesome. So thank you very much. Awesome. Awesome. All right. On that note, let's uh, let's stand and, and close in, in our uh, closing song. <laughs>
Yeah, <laughs> 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 <laughs>